Um, my name is Bob Ranella. I'm one of our product managers here at Computer Aided Technology, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. We'll be discussing Scan to 3D, reverse engineering with SolidWorks, CreaForm, and Geomagic's DesignX. So I want to thank you guys for joining us today. I'm going to start with our 30-minute breakdown of this webinar. So first thing we're going to do, we'll talk a little bit about in, uh, reverse engineering. What is it? Why do we use it? We'll talk about how it works. We'll follow that up with uh, showing you uh, what hardware is actually being used. And then we'll do a demonstration on actually reverse engineering a part from a file. So let's get started with reverse engineering. So what is reverse engineering? Well, it's the process by which a man-made object is deconstructed into to reveal its design, architecture, or to extract knowledge from an object. Now this here is something that's straight out of Wikipedia. Well, in its nutshell, we take objects that we want uh, design information, such as we see on technical drawings, and we need to extract that from a physical object, whether it be using calipers, tape measures, whether it be using a CMM, whether it be using 3D laser scanners, whatever the case may be, the whole idea is to extract that technical information that we normally look at on drawings out of a physical object. Now, the, the act of reverse engineering is a process that actually has been around for many centuries, and it has been done with many different tools. In fact, Romans are one of the first documented cases where reverse engineering has been used. They actually used it to recreate ships from the uh, Greeks. Nowadays, we don't quite use the same methods as the Greeks use, but uh, we focus on similar methods to actually extracting information. And one of the more common tools used today is 3D scanning for reverse engineering and specific reverse engineering software. So here's an example of what uh, reverse engineering would look like with a 3D scanner. On your left-hand side of the screen, you'll see a scan. And on your right-hand side, you will see the parametric model recreated from that scan. Now, the right-hand side is something that you guys are probably normal to seeing. This is something you'd create in your SolidWorks or your Inventor or whatever CAD software you're actually using. Over on the left is an STL or stereolithography file. Now, that is a tessellated language. And that right there is a graphical image, but it's built together as a surface with triangles. Now, that doesn't have any parametric data behind it. I can't grab measurements off of it. I can't change that file type, okay? So we need to get it over into a file type that represents something a little bit more what you see on the right. Now, why do engineers use reverse engineering? Well, some of the more uh, recent uses of reverse engineering are CAD models cannot be supported for modification. Example, uh, I have a CAD model locked in an IGIS or STEP. I can't modify it. I do have a physical part. Now I need to recreate it to make that technical drawings. Manufacturers no longer exist. Well, I've had this part, uh, this catalog of parts that I've used for a very long time. Now the manufacturer has gone out of business and I have a whole stock of these parts, but we have to make modifications or continue to reproduce these parts. So we reverse engineer it and we continue to make technical drawings and remanufacture it. Others are replace worn or damaged components. Uh, some parts ha are old enough to not see CAD or technical drawings and as they wear, I need to replace these parts. So we can scan the wear areas and reverse engineer the part that's being worn and maybe build up or redesign those wear areas to last longer. Other application is to analyze competitors' products. Maybe your competitor has a product that's similar to yours and you want to see how yours stacks up to theirs. So let's talk a little bit about how reverse engineering works. So reverse engineering, we already talked about the main objectives, right? To build a CAD model from the existing part. But using reverse engineering software and 3D scanning technology, there really are three main workflows that we use. So, and that really depends on what our output needs need to be. 
The first type of workflow is parametric modeling. That's something that we are normal to seeing something in our CAD software, something where we can pull dimensions off of, where we can, you know, modify the dimensions and you can see your file automatically update. Other uh, workflows are surface modeling. And we do this more with organic parts or freeform parts where we need to get maybe an IGES or step file of the physical part to send to a CNC machine or a vacuum forming machine, but we don't necessarily need um, dimensions. We don't need it to be uh, parametized to make changes. And then the third method is kind of a hybrid method between the first two. Now discussing the parametric workflow, this is pretty much where we start with our 3D scan after we scanned our physical object. We start extracting information to build our workflow, such as planes, cones, cylinders, cross sections. And you can see over on your right of your screen, after we've extracted that from the scan, we send that information over to our CAD file. And then from that cross section, we create an extrude to the thickness of the part. We take those cylinders and we'd actually do a Boolean operation to subtract it from that solid. And we'd get something with holes and the outline of our parts that we can actually make modifications to the dimensions off of. Now the second workflow, like I said, surface modeling, is what we call as is reproduced. For example, you see over on the right of your screen, the blue is the scan. Now, this is an organic pipe that has a flanged uh, one end, maybe a twist and a torque in it as well. Just making that in general in parametric form is pretty difficult. Um, but maybe I just need to create, recreate the surface of it. So one thing we do is we can create an auto surface of this geometry and we can take that auto surface and send it over to our CAD package as an IGIS or step. Now, like I was describing before, the difference between parametric and as-built or surfacing and uh, design intent. Your design intent, you're trying to recreate standardized sizes, maybe of drill bits or punches. So you want to extract that um, parametric data where you can actually make modifications to the dimensions to meet your drill bit sizes. <clears throat> where the as-built or as-reproduced, you're just trying to get an overall design feel of what your part looks like. And the diameters could vary pretty much in size depending on how worn the part is. Um, the hybrid method is, a, is pretty much a recreation of the parametric and surfaced features. Uh, in this particular example, these flanges are something that we can extract in, critical information off of and make parametric so we can adjust and control those holes. Whereas the pipe itself is just for flow, yes, it is important the way the flow goes, but no, I don't need to control every dimension on it, I just need the shape of the pipe. So we use that parametric uh, workflow to extract the flanges of this pipe, and then we use that as is reproduced workflow to extract the surface of this pipe. Now let's talk a little bit about hardware. So the hardware that I actually use for today's project is called the HandyScan 700. This is a 3D scanner that's portable and this was designed by Creoform. It has a resolution of two thousandths of an inch and an accuracy of twelve ten thousandths of an inch. So it's very accurate and it has been used for metrology applications as well. The measurement rate of this particular device is 480,000 measurements per second. That means it's creating points across the surface at 480,000 points per second. So we get a great representation of our physical part in our digital world. Again, uh, going back to that metrology application, this is NIST certified. So, how our 3D scanning workflow uh, unfolds is the first thing we do in our workflow is um, we acquire the surface of our part. We prep it by placing positioning targets or registration targets on it with the HandyScan 700. And then we continue scanning it up with our scanner itself. That data acquisition is raw data. It sends it over to our computer, but it gets a digital file format of our physical part. Next in the software, 
we tell it to generate a mesh. And this is uh, a two-part process. It creates that STL, but it also optimizes that mesh so our surfaces represent the least amount of error or the smoothest possible crisp surfaces that we have that represent our physical part. Then we output that mesh uh, STL into a reverse engineering software, uh, software and we begin our reverse engineering process. And again, the project I'm going to demonstrate with, for you guys today, we're going to go ahead and reverse engineer this water bottle you see over on the left. We're going to start by importing this STL. We're going to create our 2D sketches off of the actual scan. Then we're going to recreate our 3D solid parametric body, bottle. And then we're going to go ahead and transfer all of that over to SOLIDWORKS so we can make design changes. So let's go ahead and open up our software. So now the software you see on screen, this interface here, is called Geomagic Design X. And this is one of the types of reverse engineering software that exists out there. So the first thing that we're going to do, per my workflow, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to import our scan. I've already recreated or scanned this up with my HandyScan 700 for us today because I really wanted to demonstrate the workflow and usability of a reverse engineering software. So what you can see here on your screen is the scan of the bottle. This is an STL that has been optimized, but there's a few things we need to do to it before we start reverse engineering. One of these things in DesignX is we need to do this tool called auto-segmenting. And what this does is it looks at our entire scan and breaks it up into similar curvature based off of parametric entities, such as cylinders, cones, spheres, and surfaces. And depending on how tight you set the tolerance, you can even pull off fillets and chamfers. So we'll give it a second to go ahead and update. And here we go, what you see on screen, it's colorized every single similar curvature. You can see my fillets around the finger grips. Each surface has its own color to represent the finger grips. If we scroll over to the top, you can see a flat surface color and something for this conical top as well, a color. So by doing this, not only does it give me a uh, graphic visualization that makes it easier to reverse engineer off of, it also allows me to select certain surfaces when I'm recreating my entities. So let's start with the overall sketch of our body, okay? So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my right plane and I'm gonna ask the software to create a cross-section cut. So what it did is it pretty much sliced it in half and that gives me the overall sketch of the actual scan. Now let's go ahead and hide that mesh so we can see our drawing a little bit better. Here we have an outline of our scan. And it looks pretty smooth as far as the lines go, but it's not parametric quite yet. I don't have any dimensions or constraints. It pretty much is just a straight cross section. This is where we start doing our parametric uh, design. So per my workflow, what I wanna do is I'm thinking ahead and I wanna do a revolve of this body. So I'm gonna create an axis to revolve around. I'll go ahead and say, okay. We'll make sure this is a construction line. And then I'm gonna only take half of this actual part and I'm gonna revolve this. One good benefit of Geomagic Design X is it has this auto sketch function up here at the top. And it allows me to just box select the, the lines and it will create constraints at each point based off of what we normally would see when we're actually building it from the ground up in our say SOLIDWORKS CAD package. So I like where it's gone so far, we'll hit OK. And then I'm gonna use my trim tool to actually uh, trim it to my center line because we don't need overextending lines. We don't need this. And we don't need this side one. And then I'm gonna take this arc and we're just gonna go ahead and drag it all the way over to the center line so we have a nice little revolve. Okay, now I have my constraints. I have half of my revolved feature. The next thing I need to do is smart dimension because I want to be able to control these dimensions. So I'm just going to quickly throw in a few dimensions. And similar to our CAD packages, as we start dimensioning things, 
you will see it actually represent uh, a fully constrained uh, drawing when it turns in some CAD packages black. So we'll go ahead and add a few more in here. And I think a few more should do it. And you know what? One thing we can do here is we can start moving it and see where our constraints are missing. And we'll go ahead and add those in. I think I got this one. And we'll add in a couple more. Over constraint. And we'll go from here. So we have half of our drawing. We've got it constrained. We've got our dimensions in it. Let's go over to our model tab and let's go ahead and do our revolve. Just grab this sketch and you can see a visualization of the revolve. And already we've got the outline of the body. Now we can pop back up our sketch at any time and see how well that's lining up graphically. The next thing I want to do, we'll hide our solid body and bring back up our sketch is I want to create this cut on the top. So we'll go ahead and change our view to that. Zoom in here for you guys to see. We'll go back over to our sketch tab and I will pick on this flat surface of my mesh. We'll go ahead and confirm that, then we'll turn off our mesh and we're back in sketch mode. Now here, I don't need all this geometry, I don't need all this curves, what I do need is this top line, this top line, oops, I selected two at once, this top line, we'll confirm that, this bottom line, we'll dimension those since those are critical, and then from here what we'll do is we'll turn back on our mesh because we want those two lines to cut into our physical part. But from here, we'll just make it into a box. And we'll drag it out past our part. First, let me make a, a few more constraints. And we'll go ahead and drag it past our part. So make sure we cut all the way through the parts we need. So that's good enough. I've got the critical features that I need. If I wanted to, I can overall dimension this. Then we'll go over to our model tab. Turn back on that solid body because that's what we're actually cutting through here. And we'll do an extrude cut. And you'll see it'll cut straight through the top. So now we'll turn back on our mesh. You can see we've got a cut and the body that represents the mesh. We'll go back over to our top, and we want the uh, circular feature right here on top, our cylindrical feature, where our straw would actually go. So we'll repeat our process. We'll create a sketch back on this surface. And the only thing we're going to extract here are these two circles. So we'll use our auto sketch, have it grab those two circles our smart dimension. We'll dimension those two items. And then we'll make sure we dimension these things to our center. And we'll make these concentric circles so we're fully constrained. And then the next thing we'll do on our solid, oh, we'll use our mesh actually. We'll take these two circles and we'll extrude it up to the top. And what I can do here in my options, in my methods, is I can actually extrude up to a region. And I can just pick on the top region of my scan, and it will extrude it only up to that region. So if we turn off our mesh and back on our solid model, you can see we've pretty much got the entire part. We've got that straw feature, the flat top, the body. What's left in this reverse engineer 
is the actual finger grips, and you can see the solid model sticking through the mesh. So now that 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 requires some surfacing, you know, and it's kind of uh, difficult to extract or manually measure. So with some reverse engineering softwares, we have options as far as tools for extracting this, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to actually use our surface uh, primitive surfaces. We're going to ask it to automatically extract the uh, surface. So all I need to do is select on my mesh the areas I wanted to recreate using surfacing. And we'll hit next. And you can see it's created a little patch that represents the curvature of these finger grips on the surface. Now these are IGIS files or step files that we can actually export over to our SOLIDWORKS file. But instead of just exporting it over, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that in the next operation. We're going to use this and cut it out of our solid. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm going to use this surface as the tool, the body as my target body, and we have to pick what our remaining body is going to be. And there you go. You can see it cut it directly out of the solid. Now we're going to do that a few more times. Now this operation, there's things, tips and tricks that you do need to understand. I could select all four surfaces and have it automatically cut it out of the solid body. But when I transfer this over to SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS only operates one cut at a time or one Boolean operation at a time, which if I threw this over in SOLIDWORKS, it would throw back an error saying I can't do this operation. So that's where, you know, kind of knowing a little bit of tips and tricks and playing with the software comes in handy. So we'll do this two more times. Target body is this one. Remaining body. And one more time for good measure. Remaining body. There we go. Turn off our surfaces. And we pretty much have our part. There's one more adding, adding, additive finishing method that I would like to demonstrate for you guys before we send this over to SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to turn on my mesh and turn off my solid. We have these fillets around these finger grips. And this is something that's very hard to measure, very hard to extract. The one thing I do like about this software is that I can go turn on my solid Select my fillet tool here at the top. Make sure to select all these finger grips. And in my prompter, there's an option called Estimate Radius from Mesh. So it knows that I'm constraining the fillet to constant fillet around that area. And I can hit this button and will automatically extract the radius from the mesh or the physical part in a digitized environment to fit this part. So now I'll hit that check mark and you can see I've added those fillets in that match the mesh. Now to confirm this before we send it over to SOLIDWORKS, we have a little tool up here at the top called deviation from body. And it'll show me a plus or minus deviation. And basically the green in, and we're in uh, millimeters here, uh, we are within 50 microns is all the green. Yellow is kind of extruding out and blue is kind of cutting in. So before I send this over to SOLIDWORKS, if I wanted to, I can reiterate and try and get converged a little closer. But if this is good enough for me, then I'm ready to send this over to my SOLIDWORKS. So let's demonstrate this last step. I'll go to my home tab. Now, this software, DesignX, has the ability to communicate with a few APIs of CAD software, such as SOLIDWORKS, Creo, Siemens, Inventor, AutoCAD, and SolidEdge. But if you didn't have those particular CAD packages, I can just right-click on the solid body and save this out, or save out each individual entity, and then reopen it in my CAD package. But I do have the benefit today to demonstrate the transfer to SOLIDWORKS. Now, the live transfer to SOLIDWORKS, and I'm going to go ahead and start from the very first feature. We're going to hit this check mark. And what it's going to do in a couple seconds here is it's actually going to go ahead and open up SOLIDWORKS. 
and it's going to start rebuilding it inside SOLIDWORKS. And it's going to build my feature tree for me as well. So it's just making this big. Now you can see right now, the computer has taken over and it's sending each command over to SOLIDWORKS and rebuilding it. And you'll see over here on my left, my feature tree is actually building it as though I did it from scratch. That way it gives me that workflow that I need. And if I want to redesign this or modify this later on, I can follow my workflow per my design tree. Or if I needed to pass this on to my coworker or a customer, they can see the workflow that I did as well. So for all intents and purposes, it's just as if you designed it from scratch inside your CAD packages. Give it a couple more seconds. When it's finished, it'll actually pop up a message saying, finished exporting. There you go, export succeeded. So let's take a look at what our part looks like and I'll turn off some of the surface bodies. We'll turn off some of this construction geometry. One more plane. And there you go. We have our parametric solid inside SOLIDWORKS and we have all our drawings and dimensions and constraints associated with it that we can make our adjustments if needed. Well, that's all I have time for you guys today. Well, it looks like we're right within our 30 minute window. So if you guys do have any questions, please type them in the chat and as they pop up, I'll go ahead and answer them on today's WebEx. So I wanna thank you guys for your time. Thus, this ends our WebEx for today. And hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about reverse engineering with 3D scanning and reverse engineering software. Thank you guys, have a good day.